Oh, this is so hard. You have no idea how hard this is. Hello, people watching vehicle reviews on the interwebs. Welcome to this, the all new 2023 Toyota Crown Limited All Wheel Drive. For the first time in half a century, we get a crown here in the United States. And today I'm gonna get this new rig up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how it is constructed, and then go give it some beans. Okay, ah, I see what they did there. This little piece of sheet metal tacked on to the stainless steel muffler looks as if it's meant to direct airflow perfectly onto this rear diffuser, these little winglets. Rear suspension wise, the new Crown is utilizing a multi-link design. Everything is manufactured out of steel other than the knuckles, those are aluminum. Notice the ball joint right here on this rear link as if this has an option for rear wheel steering. This one's not equipped with it. Uh, it looks like Toyota went with a KYB fix rate damper. Rear anti-sway bar measures in at approximately 21 millimeter. Housed inside the steel rear subframe is what's known as an E-axle. It is a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor that has an output of about 40 kilowatts or 54 horsepower and 89 pound feet of torque that provides the propulsion for the rear of the vehicle, making this all wheel drive. And you see right here, there's no drive shaft connecting it to the front of the vehicle. So it's a completely independent system back here. You see up there, there are two locations where it's mounted on top of the rear subframe and then one center location in the back. The housing is spotless. This car only had 100 miles on it when it was delivered. What you see here is now the 16th generation of the Toyota Crown, and this is the S235 chassis built on Toyota's TNGA K platform. And this non-turbo all-wheel drive version weighs in at 3,980 pounds. Is that all? Is this all fuel tank? Oh, yep, it is. It's a fuel tank. It's just super sandwiched fuel tank. It's got some little mini bash bars right here protruding down to protect it. And because I know there's countless people that are gonna wanna modify their non-turbo Toyota Crown, uh, the outside diameter of the factory exhaust piping is 52 millimeters in diameter. That's two inches. As far as the ease of maintenance goes, I mean, it's lacking a drive shaft. It makes it a little bit easier considering it's transverse all-wheel drive. Toyota calls this all-wheel drive system E4, which is a nod to GT4, if, for those of you Toyota Rally fans out there. Uh, the transmission itself, the only one available with this non-turbo all-wheel drive is the Iazen P710. ECVT. It is a CVT, but it also houses an 88 kilowatt electric motor. And because it lacks a traditional transfer case for the all wheel drive system, thanks to robots, it's capable of sending 100% to the front wheels, zero to the rear, or 80% to the rear, 20% to the front. I would show you it, but it's got some. Whoa, this is weird. It's like scaly plastic cardboard. It feels more durable than Perry stuff. Up front, the Toyota Crown utilizes a McPherson strut style suspension with a steel lower control arm, aluminum knuckle and inner and outer tie rod. It's got this weird anti-vibration damper thing up here by the end link on the bottom of the strut. Front anti-sway bar measures in at approximately 26 millimeter. Time for the braking test. Going behind me. Ready? Whoa! That was so aggressive. It sounded like I murdered a whale in the process. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a set of 328 millimeter or 12.9 inch front rotors with a two piston floating caliper. My poor finger, I gotta glue that back. The wheels are a 21 by seven and a half wrapped in a 225, 45, 21 inch Bridgestone Terranza EL450 tire. And for those of you that are into detailing and taking care of things that cost a lot of money, the inside of the fender liners are carpeted. 
Out back, you have a 318 millimeter or 12.5 inch rear rotor with a single piston floating caliper and the wheel and the tire, same size as you get up front. Now back, well, I mean, it's not really carpeted. It's more like a automotive skin. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. Bolstering assessment. Mmm, very minimal, if any, bolstering. The seats do have heat and ventilation. Ventilation is actually fairly powerful, too. The seats also have rose gold piping. As far as drive modes go, there is a flipper down here in the center console where you can go from normal, eco, it changes the gauge color and layout, and sport. The drive control lever is very Lexus-like and you can pull it straight down for B mode. The whole purpose of the B mode is just for coming down a mountain or a steep hill, you can engage engine braking capabilities. A pure EV mode button. I'm gonna use drive. And uh, let's see what this little space shuttle will do. Ready? Go. Ooh, it actually let me build up some, I don't wanna say bean, but it let me build something up. Smooth. That's good. Not bad. Considering this isn't the turbo model, that's not bad. This car makes me feel short. Hood pop. Hey, that's not too heavy. No hood strut though. Well, the whole underside of the hood has no clear coat. It's all satin in the engine bay. I love that. Wait, what? Zero W8 weight oil? That is ridiculous. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Toyota Crown Limited is the Alpha 25 Alpha FXS, which is an all aluminum, dual overhead cam, naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder that produces 184 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 163 pound feet of torque, from 3,600 to 5,200 RPM. However, that is not just the only power plant source. As I pointed out earlier, the dual electric motors, one front and rear, which are hooked up series parallel with that internal combustion engine gives you a total combined system output of 236 horsepower. Don't ask me how that math makes any sense. Well, let's take a look under the engine plat. Oh, it's rubber. It's a squishy engine cover. Oh, neat. Interesting valve cover. It's like just a thin little plate on top. That's crazy. There's a ton of room on the back side of the engine because this is also available with a turbo 2.4 liter. Plastic intake manifold looks like it potentially utilizes Toyota's Tevis system, the new version of it. You see over here in the driver's side, above the transmission, all the robotic bits for the motor generator and the ECVT system. Also, you notice there is no traditional 12 volt battery up here in the engine bay. There is the one for the hybrid system under the rear seat of the car. Digging in a little bit deeper in this fairly new Alpha 25 Alpha 4 cylinder, which replaces Toyota's outgoing 2AR. This thing has a 14 to 1 compression ratio. And paired with the Atkinson cycle, it achieves a thermal efficiency of 40%, which is super high for those of you that aren't familiar with microwaving car engines. I don't know if that made any sense. Anyway, it's undersquared at an 87.5 by 103.4 millimeter bore and stroke. It has variable valve timing, intelligent, but it's electronically controlled on the intake and on the exhaust cam. It's just done normally with hydraulic oil pressure to control the variable valve timing. Since this is an economical type of vehicle, I figured I'd highlight on something that I actually found kind of enjoyable about driving it and the fact that it has this little eco game in the gauge cluster. So there's three segments that it grades you on. Acceleration, cruising, and coming to a stop. And it's not as easy as, as it would sound. Since I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I'm gonna try to do this and get a perfect score. Now it resets itself every time you come to a complete stop. So it's a never ending game. I think the objective is to keep my eco meter on the gauge cluster and not kick on the gasoline engine. Oh, gas engine kicked on. That also coincides with the battery level. 93. See, I still didn't get a perfect five squares on the start. Now that I got the cruise perfect, I need to come to a complete stop, but I gotta do so that I'm just using regenerative braking 
and not the actual brakes themselves because that's a loss of energy. Keep it in charge, right in the middle probably. And then smooth. Ah, I only got 82. The highest I've got so far was 93 for a total score. Trying again. 93. See, I still didn't get a perfect five squares on the start. Perfect stop, come on. Yeah, I did it. I got a perfect, that's my best score yet, 95. See, you have to accelerate super slow and this would impede traffic in most situations. Speed limit, yes, perfect. Now come, come to a stop really slow delayed stop. I've even tried coasting to a stop and that didn't help either. Come on. Oh, I still can't. Oh, this is so hard. You have no idea how hard this is. I give up. Those of you that play Gran Turismo and have done the eco challenges where you have to do a certain amount of laps or a certain challenge under a certain amount of fuel, it's kind of like that. It's the same kind of fun, except this is real life, and if you crash, it's more serious. I did it, kind of. I got perfect five in all categories, but it says 96. It doesn't say 100. I'm sure if I kept doing this over and over again or driving this car, if it was my own, you could get 100 frequently, but you doing this in real world driving in traffic and trying to pay attention to a gauge cluster and not crashing into something not exactly practical i do like this burt inspired unibrow tail light also like we can get the optional painted black trunk area open this is a huge trunk i think it is actually bigger than the avalon was ah yeah there's where the battery is at good weight distribution i'm dressed like mario aren't i I just, it just dawned on me. I can hear the relay behind the dash when I turn on the rear heated seats. Don't judge my nails. I work for a living. Black headliner, that's nice. Woo, look at this. That feels really durable too. That right there you'll notice is from my ashy elbows. You're welcome for me calling myself out on that. It's pretty clean looking interior, other than my dusty footprints. This thing has a giant glass roof, but it doesn't open. It's just a lookout. So if you press this button right here, it just simply slides the shade back. There's no way to open the glass, which is kind of a good thing because there's nothing but allergies up there anyway. There's a little origami piece in the cup holder so you can divide it for a odd shaped glass. Hey Toyota. How can I help you? PlayStation 341. Tuning to Sirius XM channel 341. Well, that's kind of handy. This thing has Toyota's new layout for their infotainment system. It's pretty much just all business. There's no frills or fun games or anything in here. What I do like is it's got all kinds of rose gold accents throughout the interior. I found this super strange. On the passenger side floor, there's a little plastic cap you can remove to find the VIN number. It doesn't make any sense the way they placed it like that. What's weird about it though is essentially this kind of is replacing the Avalon in the Toyota lineup, but it feels smaller on the inside than an Avalon, despite how big this thing looks on the outside. Despite this thing being a lifted car, it doesn't handle too bad and sends a little bit of body roll right there. And if you push it into a corner, you get a little whiff of understeer as well, but not too, too much. And you do kind of notice a little bit of the grip coming from the rear wheels from the all wheel drive system. So it doesn't really handle like a front wheel drive car. It's just very neutral in the way it drives. Everything is just neutral and extra medium. Where this thing shines though, especially over an EV, is in its range. 614 miles is what I saw on this when it was on a full tank of fuel. And it averages just a hair over 40 miles per gallon combined city highway, no matter what you throw at it. And I'm sure if you hyper mild it, you could probably get even better than that. Biggest downfall if I had to pick anything apart on this thing is the fact that this is in the mid forties for the limited all wheel drive. And it doesn't exactly feel like you're driving in a luxury car in here. So you're basically just paying for the tech and efficiency. And the fact that you're getting a crown and you haven't been able to get one of those in America for a long time.
It's now time to give this thing some scores, starting with the coveted bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2023 Crown Limited gets a rating of... Also, check this out. There's a horny toad over here. My camera's like a quarter mile away from where the car is at, so I gotta grab it for you. So right in here, it looks like a rock, but it's not. Just hanging out, catching some bugs. Next is the cookie score. It's the assessment of what you get for what you spend. And this thing sitting in the mid 40s gets a rating of? Followed by the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance. And it's getting a rating of? Followed by squid score, handling assessment. Lastly is the penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the new crown gets a rating of? I was a little bit surprised considering this thing is just an upscaled commuter bubble. I liked it more than I thought I was going to. I imagine the turbo version is probably even better. Hope you guys enjoy this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.